students welcome to science learning gateway so today we are going to start class 10th science chapter number 12 electricity and this chapter is very important for class 10 students and this is from this chapter is from physics and it carries good marks for your exams so uh, some terms are there some formulas are there which are very important for you if you'll understand those concepts and formulas then this chapter will be easy for you and you can score good marks in your exam so let's start with our chapter before starting guys i have a small request from you from you all if you're really liking my tutorial and work then please like and share it with your friends also and if you're new to my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever i will be uploading a new video you'll get the notification for that so we'll start with this chapter with each definition terms and formulas so that it will be easy for you to score good marks so let's start with our chapter electricity first of all you should know what is electricity right Many times you have heard about this word electricity. In your junior classes also you have read, read about this electricity chapter. So what is electricity? It is a branch of physics. In science we have three branches, physics, chemistry and biology. So electricity is a branch of physics which deals with the study of charges. So whenever the word electricity comes, you should remember the word charges. Okay. So what are the types of charges? Positive charge, negative charges like that. So you should remember this word charges. Electricity means charges. It is a branch of science which deals with the study of charges. So there are two types of electricity, two types, there are two branches of electricity, what are two types of electricity, static electricity and current electricity. From this word static, you can understand that it means rest. So, so what, what do we mean by static electricity? It is a type of electricity or branch of electricity in which, uh, Static electricity is a branch of electricity in which charges are at rest, okay? And current, what do we understand by the word current? Current means motion. So it is a type of electricity in which charges are in motion. So you have to remember static electricity means charges will be at rest. They will be at fixed point. For example, if you take a scale, scale which is made up of a glass. And if you rub that scale on your hairs and after that some after that if you bring that scale close to the close to some pieces of paper what the scales will do the scale will attract those papers right so it, that is an example of static electricity in that the charges will be fixed at a point it will not flow from one place to another place but in current electricity the charges will flow or move from one place to another place so that is the in in current electricity the charges will be in motion so but in your 10th standard syllabus according to your 10th standard syllabus we don't have to read about static electricity we will read about current electricity over there so let's start our topics which we have to study in this chapter so first of all we should look at uh, first of all we should have a look on the topics which we have to study in this tutorial so what are the topics which we have to study electric charge okay wait along with the symbols i will tell you so that you will be uh, you will be remembering those points when we will discuss the, those points electric charge the symbol of electric charge is q electric current symbol is i all the things you have to write in capital potential difference is v potential difference is also known as voltage okay many times you have heard in your house that voltage is low voltage is high resistance and resistivity resistance is represented with the letter capital r and resistivity is represented with the letter rho with a symbol rho this is called rho okay like this we should write heat generated heat we used to write with alphabet h electric power p then we have these are the physical quantities about which we have to read in this chapter after that about ohm's law we will read joule's law of heating or it is also called heating effect of electric current and at last we will read about the application of effect of current so these are the topics which we have to read in this chapter once again i will tell you the symbols electric charge is represented by q electric current with i potential difference v resistance r and resistivity with the symbol rho heat generated h and electric power is p and about these laws we will read, read and its application so let's start with our discussion First of all, we'll start with the first physical quantity that is called electric charge. And what is the symbol of electric charge? It is represented with the letter Q. Okay. Charge, electric charge. So what is the meaning of this charge? Charge means it is a type of a particle. Charge is what? It is a type of a fundamental particle which is present in an atom. So there are two types of charges, positive and the negative charge. 
okay so charge is a fundamental particle in atom and there are two types of charges positive and negative charge suppose we have this positive charge and this is one is our negative charge if the positive charge and negative charge will come close to each other what they will do they will attract each other so means what we can say unlike charges will attract each other but if positive and positive charge will come close to each other close to each other they will repel each other so what we can say that like charges repel each other these point these topics you have read in your junior classes also like charges repel each other and unlike charges will attract each other so like charges repel each other unlike charges attract each other what is the si unit of charge the si unit of charge is coulomb c o u l o u m b and its symbol is capital c you should remember the si unit of charge sometimes question is asked for one marks what is the si unit of electric charge then you have to write coulomb okay electrons carry a negative charge you all know that electrons are carrying a ne negative charge and protons carry a positive charge but their values is same they will have equal and opposite charges for example electrons carry a negative charge of 1.6 10 to 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and protons also carry a charge of plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and coulomb is the smallest unit of charge okay so one coulomb we can write as one coulomb is equal to one coulomb is equal to 6 into 10 to the power 18 electrons okay the charge on one electron is equal to negative charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so one formula we have over there q equals to anywhere n represent number of electron and e is charge on one electron suppose in the question will be asked calculate the charge for 10 electrons then what you will do 10 is the number of electron 10 into n what what is the charge on one electron charge on one electron is 1.6 into 10 the power minus 19 if we'll multiply those for it you will get the charge on 10 electrons so this was all about electric charge in this you have to remember that the si unit of charge is coulomb and um, this formula you should also remember q equals to any where n is the number of electron and e is the charge on electron okay next electric current what is the symbol of electric current i capital i and what is electric current current means motion right current means motion and electric means charges so what we can say the rate of flow of charge is called current the rate of flow of charge is called current so what will be the formula of current current is equal to charge by time rate of flow of charge means charge by time i is equal to q by t q is the charge t is the time this is the first formula for your this chapter electricity which will be used in various types of numerical i is equal to q by t current is equal to charge by time and what is the si unit of current si unit of current is ampere a m p e r e and the symbol is capital a now one instrument is also there which is used for measuring the current and the name of the instrument is a meter a double m e t e r and its symbol is like this i have uh, given the symbol like this you can draw the symbol like this one circle will be there inside that you have to write a capital A for a meter this side is positive side this side negative side like this it is a symbol of the meter in questions it is as draw the symbol of a meter then you have to draw this like this or it can be asked name the instrument which is used for measuring the current then you have to write a meter now one property of a meter we can read over there a meter has low resistance and always connected in series suppose if we draw a electric circuit suppose this is a bulb okay and suppose we have the meter over there this is our battery so a meter will always be connected in series means in the line it will be connected not in a parallel it should always be connected in series why it, it is why a meter is connected in series this question can also be asked it is connected in series because uh, if we will connect a meter in parallel then what will happen it can the circuit can burn or the or the circuit can get damaged so we cannot connect a meter in a parallel combination we should always connect it in a series because if we will connect it in a parallel then what will happen it can burn the meter or it can burn the circuit also so this is your answer for that now next quantity next physical quantity is our potential difference and it is also known as voltage okay it is also known as voltage potential difference is also known as voltage and it is represented by the letter capital v what is voltage or potential difference it is a work done to move a unit charge from one point to another point work done to move a unit charge from one point to another point so what we can write potential difference v is equals to work done divided by charge okay the so unit charge from one point to another point so v is equals to w by q this is your 
one more formula for this chapter v is equal to w by q and what will be the si unit of potential difference it is volt v o l t volt now what is the definition of one volt this question can also come define one volt what you will write when one joule of work is done in carrying one coulomb of charge then potential difference is called one volt for example what will be the si unit of work it is joule and what is the si unit of charge coulomb so how you can write this definition of volt from this relation when one joule of work is done in carrying one coulomb of charge then potential difference is called one volt one joule of work see one joule of work is done to carry how many how much uh, charge one coulomb of charge that is called potential difference one v is equals to one joule per coulomb so we can write one v is equals to one joule per coulomb so, uh, unit of work is joule and unit of charges coulomb so we can write one joule is one volt is equals to one joule per coulomb now what is the name of the instrument which is used for measuring potential difference it, the name of the instrument is voltmeter from potential difference v you can remember it is called voltmeter or from the word voltage you can remember voltmeter and what is the symbol its symbol is like this one line at this inside the circle you have to write v capital v this side positive charge this side is negative charge and voltmeter it is always connected in parallel with the circuit not in series okay like a meter is always connected in series in a circuit but voltmeter will always be connected in parallel this this sentence you should remember it has high resistance and connected in parallel so what is the difference between voltmeter and a meter a meter has low resistance and connected in series but voltmeter has high resistance and will be connected in parallel a meter is used for measuring the current voltmeter is used for measuring the potential difference two points you can write like that cell is the simplest device to maintain potential difference okay now we have the cell like battery that is the simplest device to maintain potential difference current always flow from high potential to low potential now how the current will flow in a circuit it, it will always flow, flow from higher potential to lower potential for example air air also flows from higher region higher altitude to lower altitude water also flows from high tank to a lower tank like that only current will also flow from higher potential to lower potential so this was all about your potential difference you should remember it the definition of one volt this formula v is equals to w by q potential difference equals to work done divided by charge and si unit of potential difference is volt and which instrument is used for measuring potential difference volt meter okay next now some of the symbols are given in your ncert textbook which are very important for your exam point of view of view so you should practice this di diagrams for your exam symbols of some commonly used components in circuit diagram these symbols are used while drawing the electric circuit diagram for example electric cell is represented like this positive side one longer line will be there that is for positives and one smaller line will be there that is for negative charge a battery or a combination of cell this is the this is your electric cell when the two or three cells will combine that we uh, we can call that a battery for example in this one and two cells are there so this is called a battery plug or a switch open see you have to give one bracket like symbol and and no charges no symbol will be there inside that time your switch is in open position switch closed then you have to give one dot over there wire joint like this two two wires will be joined and it will be joined like a given point wire crossing without joining like this one wire and it is crossing and it is not joining each other electric bulb symbol is this one this is very easy symbol of electric bulb resistors or resistance like this zigzag lines you have to draw like this variable resistance or rheostat one arrow you can give this one is easy like you have to first draw the resistance and after that you have to give one arrow that will be your variable resistance or rheostat a meter already i have told you one circle uh, inside that you have to give a plus and minus and for example if galvanometer will be asked then what you will do you have to draw one circle inside that you have to write g this will be positive charge and this will be negative charge and what is the use of this galvanometer it is also used for measuring the current but very sensitive current or low current is measured by the use of galvanometer next so you have to practice these diagrams one or two times you will practice and you will understand them and you can easily draw these circuit diagrams in your exams next ohm's law it is a very very important law which is generally asked in every year in board exams and in your school internal exams also so so this ohm's law is very important ohm's law 
okay so what is the statement of this ohm's law the potential difference v potential difference we use to represent with the symbol v across the ends of a given metallic wire in a electric circuit is directly proportional to the current flowing through it provided that temperature remains constant so what is the what is the statement of this one potential difference v in any wire will be directly proportional to the current flowing through it provided that temperature will be constant so what so what you can easily write the uh, statement of this ohm's law by remembering this relation what you write potential difference across a given metallic wire is directly proportional to the current flowing through it provided that temperature remains constant you have to remember this one that temperature will be always constant and potential difference will be directly proportional to the current i for example v proportional to i if we will remove this proportionality sign we'll get a constant v is equals to ir where r is our constant and it is known as proportionality constant and the name of this constant is resistance okay r is known as resistance and it is a constant using this formula v is equals to ir this is known as ohm's law formula mathematical form of ohm's law v is equals to ir where v is potential difference i is the current and r is the resistance we can write three formula two more formulas using this formula we can write r is equals to v by i for example r we will this side and v is that side so v divided by r i also you can write after that you can write i is equals to v by r so two formulas you can write suppose in a question v will be given i will be given you have to calculate the resistance you can calculate using this formula suppose in a question current will be given and resistance will be given then you can easily calculate the potential difference so this formula if you will remember one formula you can write three more formulas using that v is equals to i r then you can write for r also and for i also now what is the definition of resistance it is the property of a conductor to resist the flow of charges through it Okay, Resist resistance. It is a property of conductor. So, what are conductors? Conductors are those substances which allow electricity or charges to flow through them. Example: metals and alloys. And what are insulators? Insulators are those substances which will not allow electricity or charges to flow through them. For example: rubber, wood, glass. Okay, so resistance. What is resistance? It is a property of a conductor. Means it will be for conductors only to resist the flow of charges through it. Its SI unit is ohm. Okay, and the symbol of ohm is like this. You have to write the symbol of ohm like that. So what is one ohm? One ohm is equals to one volt divided by one ampere. So we can write the definition of one ohm. over here when potential difference is 1 volt and current through the circuit is 1 ampere then the resistance r is 1 ohm okay you can easily write the re definition of 1 ohm if you will remember this relation 1 ohm is equals to 1 volt by 1 ampere when potential difference is 1 volt and current flowing through it is 1 ampere then resistance will be 1 ohm so this is the definition of resistance if we plot a graph versus potential difference and current then what we be, what we will get suppose this side we have the potential difference and this side we have the current then we'll get a straight line vi graph for ohm's law we'll get a straight line for this one okay you should remember this graph also sometimes it may be as draw the vi graph for ohm's law then you have to draw like this potential difference this side current this side and you have to draw a straight line from the origin next one word over there is their variable resistance we have seen the symbol of variable resistance in that variable resistance is a component used to regulate current without changing the source of voltage okay it is a type of component which is used in a circuit to regulate the current without changing the source of voltage and rheostat what is rheostat in electric circuit a device called rheostat is used to change the resistance in the circuit both the things are same variable resistance and rheostat is same So they, so they have the same function. That is to, that is the, to change the resistance in the circuit. They used to change the resistance in the circuit. Okay. Next. Now the factors on which resistance of a conductor depend. Just now we have read about resistance that it is a property of a conductor to resist the ch charge of uh, to resist the change of current flowing through it. So just now we have read that. Now. what are the factors on which resistance of a conductor will be depending this is also very important question this question is also asked write the factors on which resistance of a conductor depends for this you have to remember this formula r will be proportional to l by a l is the length of the conductor and a is the area of cross section if we will remove the proportionality sign we'll get a symbol rho 
rho l by a and what is the name of this rho rho is called resistivity it is a constant of proportionality known as resistivity now we'll look at the factors on which resistance of a conductor depends as you can see in this uh, formula resistance is directly proportional to the length and it is inversely proportional to area of cross section though those are the factors we have to write over there resistance of a uniform metallic conductor depends on first point directly proportional to the length of the conductor it is directly proportional to the length of the conductor al inversely proportional to the area of cross section a and it also depends on the nature of the material which material we are taking which metal or alloys which we are taking on that also resistance of a conductor will depend so these are the three points three factors on which resistance of a conductor will depend directly proportional to the length of the conduct it will depend on the length inversely proportional to area of cross section it will depend on area of cross section also and it will also depend on the nature of the material suppose resistance is high then if the length of the conductor will be high then resistance will also be high but if resistance will be high area of cross section will be low because they are inversely proportional to it if area of cross section will be more resistance will be low and if resistance will be high area of cross section will be low okay less so these are the factors now about the constant of proportionality resistivity we will read now resistivity it is the fundamental property of a metal that resists the flow of electric current it is also a property of material fundam that resists the flow of electric current through it and what is the unit of resistivity it is ohm meter okay and the si unit of resistivity is ohm meter resistivity does not change with change in length or area of cross section but it changes with change in temperature means resistivity does not depends on length and area of cross section but it will depend on temperature okay range of resistive for resistivity for metals and alloys for metals and alloys the value of resistivity is very low 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter to 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter you can see for metals and alloys the value of resistivity is very low but for glass and rubber it is high 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 17 ohm meter glass and rubbers are the insulators metals and alloys are the conductors resistivity of alloys are higher than that of metals alloys what are alloys alloys are the alloys are formed by the combination of two or more metals or a metal and a non metal their properties is entirely different from the metal right so so resistivity of alloys are higher than that of the metal and they do not oxidize or burn at high temperature so what we have read that resistivity of alloys will be more than metals and they will not burn or oxidize at high temperature because of this region alloys are used in electrical heating devices like iron and toaster the so one question can come from here also why alloys are used in electric iron and toasters or ele or electrical heating devices what answer you will write that alloys have very high resistivity and they do not oxidize or burn at high temperature so they are used in electrical heating devices they have high resistivity and they do not burn at high temperature this two points you have to remember and you can write the answer now for making you have seen that in the bulb and that bulbs which we use in our homes okay in that bulb filaments are present inside that do you know from which metal that filament is made that filament is made from a metal called tungsten its melting point is very high that's why tungsten metal is used for making the filaments of the bulb and inside the bulb means inside the bulb inside the glass some gases are present like nitrogen or argon gases are present so to protect this tungsten to prolong the life of the tungsten so this was about bulb copper and aluminium copper and aluminium you all know these are the metals are used for electrical transmission lines means in the electrical equipments or in the in the electrical wires these metals are used copper and aluminium as they have low resistivity so why they are used for electrical transmission lines because they have low resistivity the so one question can come from here also why aluminium and copper are used for electrical transmission lines so what you will write copper and aluminium are used for electrical transmission lines because they have low resistivity Okay, so this was all, all about your factors depending on conductors. Next, we have resistors. What are resistors? A resistor is an electrical component that limit or regulate the electric current. It is also one of the electric component that limit or regulate the electric current. Okay, by the, the resistor, resist with the help of resistor, we can regulate the electric current flowing through the circuit. Example, fan. television etc resist now we have two types of combination over there resistor in series and resistors in in parallel first of all we'll read about resistor in series combination so what is resistor in series combination suppose when r1 r2 
R3, suppose these are the resistors, R1, R2, R3, they will be connected in a single line. And then that is called a series combination. Okay. When two or more resistors are connected end to end, then arrangement is called series combination. You can see the resistor R1, R2, R3. They are connected with each other's point. Suppose this is one of the point of this one, it is connected to this one. This point is connected to that point. They are connected end to end. So this type of combination is called series combination. Okay. So when two or more resistors are connected end to end, the arrangement is called series combination. In this you can see voltmeter is connected in parallel with the resistors and a meter is connected in series with the resistor. We have read that voltmeter will always be connected in parallel and a meter will be connected in series. And the direction of current also you can see from here, the current is flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Okay. So like this, if the if in the exam it will be asked, draw a circuit diagram representing series combination with a meter and voltmeter, then you have to draw this type of diagram. Okay. Next, total resistance in series. What will be the total resistance? Suppose we have three resistance R1, R2 and R3. So we, we want to calculate the total resistance. In series combination, how we will calculate? We have to add the values of all the resistance R1, R2 and R3. Suppose this is 5, this is 5 and this is 5. So altogether we have 15. Okay. In series combination, this is one of the formula which you have to remember Rs equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3. In series combination, the current through each resistor is same. Okay, in series combination, what will happen? The current flowing through all the resistance will be same. Suppose the current I is flowing through this. So the, this current will be same in R1 also, R2 also and R3 also. The same current will flow through all the resistor. The potential difference V is equal to sum of potential difference. But now we have but for all the um, all the resistance we have different different types of potential difference for r1 v1 will be the potential difference for r2 v2 will be the potential difference and for r3 v3 will be the potential difference so total potential difference will be v1 plus v2 plus v3 now we have read about ohm's law v is equals to ir if we will replace v with ir we can write ir over there in place of ir we will write r ir1 ir2 and ir3 i we will take common this side also i is there i i will cancel out r is equals to r1 plus r2 plus r3 this formula we have got r is equals to r1 plus r2 plus r3 so you have to remember that in series combination all the resistors will be connected end to end okay and the formula will be r1 plus r2 plus r3 next now we'll read about the parallel combination resistors in parallel. How they are connected in parallel combination? Reciprocal of equivalent resistance is equal to sum of reciprocal of individual resistance. Reciprocal means 1 by R. So suppose this is the reciprocal 1 by 2. This is reciprocal of 2. So 1 by R P. P I have written for parallel is equals to 1 by R1 1 by plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So reciprocal of equivalent resistance. This is the reciprocal of equivalent resistance is equal to sum of reciprocal of individual resistance. Sum means 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So this is your parallel combination. Equivalent resistance is less than the value of the smallest individual resistance in the combination. It will be suppose uh, RP. So it's, it is reciprocal, then its value will be less than that of the individual resistance also. Voltage across each resistor is same and equal to the applied voltage. In this case, all in all the resistors, the voltage will be same, but current will be different in all the cases. For R1, current will be I1 and for I i2 the current will be uh, r2 the current will be i2 and for r3 current will be i3 for example i is equals to i1 i2 and i3 v by r we can write i with the formula v by r v by r1 v by r2 and v by r3 how we can represent this parallel combination di diagram i will draw that this one suppose this is your one of the resistance suppose this is second resistance and this one is your third resistance. This is your R1, this is R2 and this is your R3. Suppose this current flowing flowing through it is I. So it will divide in the three groups R1, I1, I2 and I3. So current will be divided in all the three resistors but voltage will be same because only one voltmeter will be there over there and its voltage will be same in all the cases so in pal in series combination what we have read that current will be same in all the resistors but voltage will be different just opposite over there we have to write that current will be different for all the resistors but voltage uh, voltage will be same over there 
Now, there are some of the advantages of parallel combination over series combination that we should read. What are the advantages of parallel combination over series combination? In series circuit, when one component fails, the circuit is broken and none of the component works. What happens in series combination? If one of the component will fail, the circuit will be broken and all the components will not work because in series combination what we have read that all the resistors or all the appliances will be connected end to end. Suppose this one will fail then what will happen the, cir the circuit will be break will be broken down and the other components will also not work so this is one of the disadvantage of series combination next one different appliances have different requirements of current this cannot be satisfied in series as current remains the same for example in our house we have fan also bulb also television also and acs also microwave also all the equipments or all the appliances have different requirements of current right if we, we will connect all the appliances in series then what will happen the same current will flow through them so the, by this way our need cannot be satisfied this cannot be satisfied in series combination because all the appliances needs different different amount of current that can be possible only through parallel combination in series combination that is not possible at all Third point what we have, the parallel circuit divide the current through the appliances. Each appliance get proper current depending on its reason. In parallel combination, we have read that the current will divide in among all the resist, uh, all the appliances. So in parallel combination, we can get the required amount of current on depending on the different, different appliances. So in parallel circuit, what will happen? The, the current will be div divided through all the appliances. Each appliances will get the required amount of current. Next. In parallel combination, it is very easy to connect or disconnect a new appliance without affecting the working on the up other, other appliance. Suppose we want to uh, connect or disconnect a new appliance, then we can easily do that without affecting the other appliances. So these are the advantages of parallel combination over series combination. This topic is also very important. So you should learn all the four points from there. Okay. Next, we have heating effect of electric current. What is heating effect of electric current? If an electric circuit is purely resistive, the source of energy continually gets dissipated entirely in the form of heat. This is known as heating effect of electric current. So this is the statement for heating effect of electric current. You should remember the statement. If an electric circuit is purely resistive, suppose one electric circuit is there that is purely resistive, the source of energy continually gets dissipated entirely in the form of heat. So the energy which we are providing in the circuit is continuously coming out in the form of heat. So this is called heating effect of electric current. E. We can write uh, energy is equals to power into time. Right? E is for energy e is equals to P into T. P we can write as Vi. P is power equals to V into I into T. Heat produced. Heat is also in the form of energy. Heat is also a form of energy. We can write in place of E as H. H equals to V I T. We can write replace P with E with H and we can write this formula H V equals to I T. We know that V is equals to I R. Again, we'll replace this V with I R. Then we can write H equals to I square R T. This is a formula for heating effect of electric current. H is equals to I square into R T. Now, we'll read about Joule's law of heating. This is very important topic. Okay, Joule's law of heating. It states that heat produced in a resistor is this H. Okay, it states that heat produced in a resistor is directly proportional to the square of current for a given resistance. Just now we have I have told you H is equals to I square into R T. This is our formula. So heat produced in a conductor will be directly proportional to the square of the current. Right. Second point, what is there? Directly proportional heat produced in a conduct in a resistor is directly proportional to resistance. This resistance. Okay, and last one, heat produced in a correct in a resistor is directly proportional to the time for which current flows through the resistors. So H is equals to I square R T. So this is known as Joule's law of heating. If you don't remember these sentence, then only you should write the three points. Heat produced in a resistor is directly proportional to square of the current. Heat produced in a conductor is directly proportional to resistance, and heat produced in a conductor in a in a resistor is directly proportional to the time. Okay, so this is known as Joule's law of heating. Now, practical application of heating effect of electric current. Now we'll discuss some of the practical application of heating effect of electric current. Heating effect is desired is desirable in devices like electric iron, electric heater, 
electric oven and electric fan means this heating effect of electric current can be used in devices like electric iron electric heater electric oven and electric fan sometimes this question also asks name some devices in which heating effect of electric current is used or can be used so you have to write electric iron electric heater electric oven or electric fan any two or three you can remember it cannot be used undesirable in which of the diseases in which of the devices like computer television and refrigerators these devices we cannot use the heating effect of electric current now if we will talk about the electric bulb electric electric heating is used to produce light in bulb heating effect is used for producing light because bulb give us light tungsten whose melting point is 3380 degree celsius is used for making filament of the bulb in this chapter i have told you that the filament of the bulb is made from a metal called tungsten whose melting point is very high okay because of this only it is used for making the filament of the bulb and one more point is that it does not oxidize or burn at high temperature so why tungsten is used for making the filament of the bulb for two points you can write first of all its melting point is very high that is 3380 degree celsius and second one it does not burn or oxidize at high temperature now some of the inactive gases like nitrogen and argon are used to fill the bulbs to prolong the life of the filament means to increase the life of the filament these gases nitrogen and argon are used to fill the bulb these gases are very unreactive gases they will not react with the filament of the bulb so these gases are used to increase the life of the filament most of the power consumption by the filament appears as heat but a small part of it is in the form of light radiated okay most of the power which will be used by the filament is in the form of heat generally heat will be produced but few small part of it will in the form of light that light we are we are getting from the bulb our next topic is electric fuse and electric power these are the last topic of this chapter electric fuse so what is electric fuse generally in our house we have electric fuse it is a safety device we all know that it is a safety device so electric fuse is a safety device that protects our electrical appliances in case of short circuit or overloading so you should remember the definition of electric fuse it is a safety device that protects our electrical appliances like refrigerators acs microwaves television in case short circuit or overloading will occur that time okay fuse is made up of pure tin or alloy of copper and tin which are the metals for by which fuse is made it can be made of pure tin or alloy of copper and tin fuse is always connected in series with the live wire wires okay it will be connected in series with the live wires and fuse has low melting point fuse has low why fuse has low melting point suppose if overloading or short circuit will occur then what will happen the fuse will melt and break and all the and the power and the power will be cut off so that our appliances will be protected current capacity of fuse is slightly higher than that of the appliances so it can carry more current than our appliances so this was all about our fuse next is our electric power and the symbol and the symbol of electric power is capital p so what is power it is the rate the rate at which electric energy is consumed or dissipated in electric circuit is called electric power okay the rate at which electric energy is consumed or dissipated it's taken or given out in the form of in an electric circuit is called electric power okay electric power is also known as rate of doing work right that is also one of the definition of electric power p is equals to vi this is very important formula for power p is equals to vi voltage into current we can also write as we know from ohm's law v is equals to ir right so we can replace this v with ir then what we will get i square r and again if you will i square into r and one more formula you can write as v square by r this is these are the formulas which you have to remember for electric power and what is the si unit of power it is what w a w t capital w with capital w we used to represent this it is a power and what is the definition of watt it is the power consumed by a device that carries 1 ampere of current when operated at a potential difference of 1 volt so what is the definition of watt it is the power consumed by a device that will carry 1 ampere of current when operated at a potential difference of 1 volt from this relation you can write the definition 1 watt is equal to it will be the power when a device will carry a 1 ampere of charge at a potential difference of 1 volt this we can write 1 watt is equals to 1 volt into 1 ampere 1 volt ampere and what are the com commercial unit of electrical energy kilowatt hour kwh kilowatt hour or it is also commonly called as unit when your electricity bill comes in that you can see they are, they used to write unit so that is the commercial unit of electrical energy also known as kilowatt hour 1 kilowatt hour equals to 1000 watt 
and in one hour how many seconds are there 3600 seconds we'll multiply 1000 with 3600 seconds we'll get 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 watt second and which is equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joule so 1 kilowatt hour equals to 1 unit of electric energy so you should remember this relation also 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joule so this was all about this chapter. Now we will have a look on the important formulas of this chapter which we have read in this chapter. The first formula was of current. Electric current I is equals to Q by T charge by time. Potential difference V is equals to work done divided by charge Q. V. This is from Ohm's law. Potential difference V is equals to I into R. Current into resistance. Then resistance equals to rho L by A. Rho is our resistivity, L is the length of the wire and area of cross section. For series combination, total resistance will be R1 plus R2 plus R3 and this will be greater than this one because the sum total will be greater than this. 1 by RP, this is for re re parallel combination, reciprocal of of this resistance is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. Next we have read about heat generated. H is equals to VIT and the formula for heating effect of electric current we have read is equals to H equals to I square into RT. Current, resistance, time. Power we have read E by T, rate of doing um, work or energy. Okay. Then P is equals to VI. We have read about this formula. P is equals to VI. So we can replace V with I square into R and again we can write this one also P is equals to V square by R. So this was all about the formulas for numericals. I will make a separate video so that we can use these formulas for doing solving the numericals and you, then you can understand how we will do the numericals. I hope you will have understood the concepts and the terms of this chapter. If you have any doubt you can comment in the comment section so that I will try to clear your doubt. Thank you for watching my channel. And if you like this tutorial, then please click on the like button and share it with your friends also. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever I will be uploading a new video, you'll get the notification for that. And you can also connect with me through my Facebook page. The link I will give in the description box. And what you can do is that give a reading to that chapter electricity and watch the video once if you have any doubt you can comment in the comment section so that i can clear your doubt practice the formulas once write the formula try to remember the formula i will make a separate video for your numerical section thank you for watching my channel